Hi, uh, I'm in the process of uh, making some more 30X aircraft. Uh, it'll be similar to this one right here. This gives you an idea of what it will look like. This is the uh, wing assembly. It's actually three pieces with these two trusses in the front. And uh, none of them are glued together, they just stuck together. And down the road, the fuselage will get mounted to the side. So that's what it's going to look like. But the reason I'm making this video is so that uh, I can share a construction technique that I use. We look at uh, this plane right here, this thing I call the uh, miglet. This section right here, the bottom, and this section here, including both the vertical stabs, is all one piece. And what makes, what's nice about that is when you assemble this, it goes together really nice and quick. This is really not an actual flying airplane, this was a mock-up, but it does fly. Here is another one, uh, same technique. Here I'll take the wing off, unfold it, and you can see that it's, most of the fuselage is just one piece. And it's folded here and here. Now to give this thing strength, what I've done is I've added scotch tape to the opposite side. And the kind that I'm using is satin finish scotch tape, but any film celluloid type tape would work. Okay, so how does this apply to the 30X? We look at the 30X, this section right here, and this section right here are made in a similar manner. You notice that this really consists of a bottom and two sides, and this piece here also has a bottom and two sides. So basically I'm going to show how to make one of these, and then you can apply that however you like to maybe one of your Depron airplanes. I've already made the front piece, that's this piece right here. Didn't take very long to make. And here's the back piece right here, and I'm going to make that right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut cut it out, uh, and I'm just going to cut out from the front to the back, and I'm going to leave the side material until after I'm done. Now when you do this, you want to use a nice sharp knife. If you use a dull knife, it'll drag and tear the foam, and it'll give you a really crummy looking edge. So you always want to keep in mind that you're your cutting tool has to be sharp. If you think it's getting dull, it's time to replace the blade. They don't cost that much. Roughly, I guess, a, a dime a piece. So basically I'm just overcutting that piece, leaving material on the sides. Here is the piece now. I've basically cut it to size on this side and on this side. Now I just remembered, because I'm in a hurry, that I should have actually put tape on here first, but it's not too late. Let's put some tape on there right now. If 
you look closely at this, there's a line that runs through here and a line that runs through here. Those are the, basically the hinge lines where this thing is going to fold up. And what we want to do is get the tape equally spaced on both sides of that line. And so we need two pieces of tape. Now you may notice I'm using this blue uh, board. This is really nice to cut on. If you're cutting on wood, the knife blade has a tendency to, uh, to follow the grain of the wood. Whereas on here, the blade just will track wherever you direct it. And they seem to last forever. One of the problems about uh, using these boards is the habit of doing your gluing on top of it. And what will happen as you glue is you'll wind up getting glue spots on the board which later will dig into your foam pieces. So you have to be a little careful not to get glue on it. And if you do get glue on it, to sand them off. If you look closely at my board, you'll see worn spots here, here, and here. That's where I sanded off the glue. Okay, I trim the tape. Now I'm going to put the groove on the opposite side from where the lines are, so I have to transfer these locations to the opposite side. The accuracy of your work is really dependent upon you at this point. Now I'm going to take my knife and I'm going to run a line down this black line and this black line, but I'm not going to go all the way through. And then I'm going to take the blade and hold it at an angle like this, and cut out the groove, cut out a V-groove. So this is where I use my magnifier so I can see what I'm actually doing. And then it's just a matter of keeping it the same width or a distance away from the black line as you come down the line. That's one piece. Take out the other side. And then we'll do the other one. I'm cheating. I'm actually looking underneath my back. So where are we at 